Hey guys, Andrew the Rag Company, and in today's video, we're gonna show you how to clean and maintain your polishing pads. Let's jump into it. All right, so you just got into machine polishing and you got yourself some polishing pads. You use them once, twice, and now they're gunked up and you don't know what to do. Well, the good news is, is that by the time you get done watching this video, you're gonna know how to clean, maintain, and store those precious polishing pads for your next detail. So first and foremost, we need to discuss the different types of polishing pads. And yes, there are different types because there's different substrates for different polishing needs, whether it's heavy cutting or fine finishing. So the first and most common type of polishing pad is going to be made out of foam. So here on my left, I have a very ultra soft polishing pad that's gonna be used for light polishing and finessing the paint. And then we have a heavier cutting pad here, which is going to be able to remove more uh, defects and deeper defects at that. Now, these are gonna be the most common because they're easiest to maintain, they do a lot of work, and they last quite a bit of time but there's a different type of polishing pad that's gonna cut deeper than that, which is kind of in the middle, and that's going to be a wool polishing pad. This one's pretty gunked up, as you can see, but this is one of my favorites because it has a medium to heavy amount of cut, depending on the compound that you use, and wool generally stays cooler during the polishing process, yet it still has good cutting ability. However, it may leave some micromarring during the finer polishing steps. Now, lastly here, we have a microfiber pad. Now, there's different types of microfiber out there. Sometimes there's hybrid microfiber that use a combination of wool and microfiber, but this is just good old fashioned microfiber. So this is going to have a very heavy cutting effect for the most part, depending on whether or not it's a dedicated polishing or cutting pad, this being a cutting pad here. Um, and this right here is gonna get extremely gunked up during the compounding process. So while it's going to be able to remove a lot of defects, this is also gonna build up a ton of heat and it's gonna build up a lot of product on the surface, which means it's gonna to need to be cleaned more often. So those are gonna be the three general types of polishing pads out there. Again, there's some hybrids of certain ones kind of in the middle, but this is kind of just the general gist. So, now that you know the different types of polishing pads, let's jump into how to clean them. All right, so the first and probably easiest type of pad cleaning starts with a brush. So this right here is called the Rupes Claw Tool. It's probably one of my favorite tools in my polishing lineup because it's so versatile. This side right here can be used to dislodge the pad from the polisher itself, making it very easy to remove, and that way we're not ripping the hook and loop material on the back. And then this side over here is going to be our brush side. But this is a different kind of brush because it's gonna have these rubber kind of, I don't wanna call them squeegees, but they kind of look like that, and some very stiff bristles here. Now with this brush side right here, we'll go ahead and simply brush the pad. And you can see a lot of that material is coming off there. Now, this isn't a perfect system, but it will kind of break up some of that compound, some of that polish off the front of the pad and clean it a little bit easier. Here's a foam pad, for example, on this. And you can actually see that this is doing quite a bit more work removing that old stuff. Now, brushing is fine, but it does take a lot of time. So while it is something good that you can use in a pinch or something that you can use on the fly while you're polishing, meaning that you lift it off of the paint here while it's still on the machine, turn the machine on, spin it, and bring this to that, and that's going to help you clean that a lot faster. But again, this isn't gonna give you a perfect clean, but it's great for on the fly jobs. Now, one of the next most common types of pad cleaning comes from compressed air. Whether it's a blow gun attachment on your air compressor or something fancy like our Ultra Air Blaster, which creates a vortex of air really blowing and pulling all that compound off the pad surface. Now, compressed air does work amazing. It really, really does for on the fly jobs, but I've never seen compressed air really clean a gunked up pad such as this right here, where that compound is really, really ingrained deep in the pad. This is something that's gonna be used on the fly, similar to the brush here, that's going to really just be a preventative thing and keep the pad going for longer. Now, the downside to using compressed air is that it's going to blow a lot of that compound dust up in the air, meaning that you're gonna be breathing that in. And I don't know about you guys, but I don't like breathing in compound or polishing dust. That's not my thing. So I do recommend wearing a mask or a respirator or anything like that when using a blow gun like this uh, to remove that compound because again, it's abrasives in the air. You don't wanna be breathing those in. So uh, it does work great. It does work fantastic on the fly, similar to the brush, but just make sure you're wearing a mask. 
Now, these next few ways we're gonna talk about involve water and are my preferred ways of cleaning pads. Speaking of wet things, you know what's a slippery slope? Not subscribing to the Rag Company's YouTube channel. 90% of you watching this video are not subscribed to the Rag Company YouTube channel. What are you doing? Hit that subscribe down below and then continue watching. The easiest way is going to involve a spray bottle here and a little bit of rag stretches or your favorite all-purpose cleaner. What I like to do is fill this up with water, put a little bit of APC or a little bit of rag stretches in that, and then I go ahead and pre-spray my pads. What this is going to do is start to break down a lot of that compound in the pad. Then from there, I'm gonna let it sit for a few minutes or so, walk to my sink, turn it on the shower setting, and rinse everything out with warm to hot water. This is going to simply melt away a lot of that compound, and I can actually agitate it with my hand or even use my brush to agitate it further. After that's done, I'll give it just a quick squeeze and then either let it air dry or bring it directly back to my machine and actually spin dry it into a dry bucket. So I'm not getting any of that splatter anywhere. Now this is a very easy way to not only clean your pad, but also cool your pad off and add a little bit of moisture to actually help with the polishing or compounding process, depending on what you're doing. And this way I use all the time and it's absolutely fantastic, even on the fly. Now, another way of cleaning that involves water and a little bit of R2R is the good old fashioned washing machine method. Now, this is something that I use at home and many other detailers use at home and whether our significant others know about this or not is our little secret. Shh. Now, this way is pretty easy because all you need to do is grab all of your polishing pads, throw them into the wash, add one to two ounces of rags to riches and wash on cold or warm. After that cycle is done, you can throw them into the dryer at low or no heat or you can simply pull them out and have them air dry. And I guarantee you that these pads are gonna come out 90 to 95% clean, and this method works every single time. And if you have extremely soiled pads, such as something like this, I can actually pre-spray them with R2R and then throw them into the wash with a little bit more R2R as well. So R2R really is kind of the king here in many of our cleaning steps. Now, another method that involves water and is not technically my favorite, but I do see a lot of detailers doing this, is the pressure washing method. So what detailers will do is they will create a, a big board and then they're gonna put some hook and loop backing on there and place their pads all over the board and simply pressure wash the compound away. Now, this does actually work pretty well, but the downside is that you're gonna be putting a lot of wear and tear on the hook and loop backing and possibly causing some premature delamination on the pad itself. And you don't wanna do that because polishing pads are an investment and you want to try to keep your investments as long as you can. Now, last but not least, and arguably my favorite way to clean polishing pads comes from this thing right here. This is Lake Country's pad washer and is a fantastic investment for pretty much every detailer everywhere. This allows you to clean your pads on the fly without ever having to remove them from the machine themselves. Now this is going to be another wet method of cleaning. Here in this essentially bucket, we're gonna have two different chambers. The bottom chamber is going to have our cleaning solution, whether it be just water or maybe water with a little bit of optimum no rinse or maybe water with a little bit of rags to riches. This is gonna be sucked up through this top portion here once we apply pressure. This is gonna shoot that cleaning solution up into the pad itself. Now, after the pad is wet and you've kind of spun it here on these uh, little dots here, you're gonna bring it up and then spin dry it. And all that extra liquid and all the extra stuff is gonna land on these outer edges here and fall down to this little trap below landing here in the middle of the bucket. After you're done there, you can go ahead and jump straight back to machine polishing. Now there is a downside to using a dedicated pad washer. Similar to the pressure washing situation, you are getting this pad wet and then you are immediately using it afterwards, which means you could have some premature delamination of the hook and loop backing. Now, in my opinion, it's all kind of part of the game and it's worth the risk because how easy this is, but let's just say you don't want to continue polishing. You can actually just remove the pad and go ahead and set it aside and let it air dry as you would uh, out of the washing machine. But me personally, I kind of like a little bit of the dampness it adds to the pad because not only does it cool the pad, but I feel like I get a little bit of a better job out of the compounding and polishing I'm doing regardless of the different pad type I'm using. So um, the pad washer here, a fantastic investment. I think 
everybody needs one of these or at least a brush or at least some rags to riches. But regardless of the system you use, every method we talked about here will result in a cleaner pad. So hopefully you guys enjoyed watching today's video. And if you guys learned something or just liked seeing this detailing content, make sure to give us a big thumbs up, subscribe down below for more and stay tuned for more videos right here at The Rag Company.